another uh, method of en enhancement. Uh, it's in this category. Um, we can start with uh, level slicing, whereby we just look through the, the data uh, and at some point uh, we, we, we start chopping it up and say all of this below this value will get one particular gray value. Anything above that and between another value gets another gray value. We're just classing the data essentially. Uh, we're, we're reclassing the image so that we get, in this case, five levels. It could be more levels. It doesn't necessarily have to be five. It could be three, ten, what have you. And then we can start seeing areas of similarity uh, in our image. Um, more clearly, more distinctly, we can see that these are more like each other, even for, at least for this grayscale image. And this is quite similar, really, to thresholding. But in thresholding, we actually only have two levels. Uh, we choose some value below which everything else, uh, everything lower than that is a zero, say, and everything above it is a, a one, uh, which essentially creates us uh, creates a mask. Um, from that from our from our data so the, the, the thresholding is like level slicing but with just two levels uh, we just call it something else another thing we can do this is moving beyond uh, enhancement now really it's coming under the same category uh, but well I suppose we can call this enhancement when we're looking at the vegetation index, where we just take near infrared uh, and divide it by the red. Uh, so it's a band ratio. Uh, band ratios are quite common. Um, more advanced is the um, normalized difference vegetation index. This one we can typically do on the fly. This one we typically don't do on the fly. It's not that computers can't handle it nowadays, they can, but this is a this is more of a, a, a definite product that we're interested in. This is a, a lot of scientific literature behind it that says, yes, this is uh, a valid approach, good thing to do. Um, and so we're taking the difference between the near infrared. This is what that's strongly reflecting uh, in, uh, in vegetation, the near infrared, um, and not as strongly reflecting in, in, the, in the visible light. Typically, red is chosen because it's closest to, to and it's, it's also a very low reflectance. Green, we can also, sometimes you see green being used, although that reflects more highly than red in vegetation. Um, and we're normalizing that difference uh, by the sum of the two. Uh, hence, normalized difference vegetation index. You should have worked with this before, you've seen it. Um, but this is a typical sort of band ratio enhancement to tell us where we have vegetation. Another pretty standard method uh, for image enhancement is false color composites when we're talking about um, uh, multiband uh, uh, remote sensing data. So if we have access to light beyond the visible uh, uh, range, uh, typically we're talking about uh, infrared uh, values. Uh, we might also be getting data from somewhere else, but typically we're looking at uh, infrared values as well. We're mixing those. We might be looking at entirely an image consisting of Different, uh, different types of uh, infrared, or we might be looking at some visible band or bands together with uh, near infrared. But remember that on the screen, as our eyes can only, uh, as our eyes can see it, we only have access to three basic colors, uh, red, green, and blue. Uh, so we can't visualize more than three colors, at, well, three bands at once. Uh, we are limited to that. Uh, and so, in this in this standard false color composite, uh, the standard vegetation false color composite, we've simply shifted everything along one. Get rid of the blue. Um, the blue is the least helpful. Tends to be um, uh, to, to, to spread more in the atmosphere, so our, our spatial resolution is slightly worse, and maybe the signal strength coming through isn't entirely accurate because of that spread. Um, focus more on the green and the red and the near infrared. So we just kind of shifted things along so that the near infrared is actually what's shown as red here. Um, and this is standard. We can recognize this, uh, this, this palette, as it were, of colors as being this standard false color composite with, for um, uh, green, red, near infrared, where we have roads and other hard surfaces as this more sort of gray cyan color and vegetation as red. That's very, very typical for this, uh, this false color composite.
Another form of uh, image enhancement would be uh, filtering, uh, where we typically in filtering, what we're talking about is a spatial relationships between the pixels or cells. We run a kernel or a window, uh, same thing, essentially over an image and look at what's happening within that area uh, and filter it in some way uh, to get a new value. There are other methods, and I will at the end of this lecture uh, take a very, very simplified and quick look at Fourier analysis. Actually, for this course, if you're watching this as part of the, the course, uh, this isn't really included, uh, but it's something that you will probably encounter uh, in the software and wonder what it is. And it's actually conceptually relatively straightforward to understand difficult to master mathematically, and I don't claim to, to, to be able to do that entirely, to be perfectly honest, uh, but conceptually, relatively straightforward. Um, so, image enhancement. Uh, using a kernel. The moving window, we have, uh, you've, you've seen this before, typically we're looking at a 3x3 three three kernel, so there are 9 pixels in a square, and we move that over the image. We do a calculation at one point, then move it over one cell or one pixel, do a new calculation, move it over, do a new calculation, and so on and so forth. Um, you will probably come across these words, low pass. Um, that typically you, um, you've seen in, in, in other image software um, on, your, on your phone or, or filters that you have access to in, in Photoshop and, and things like this. Low pass and high pass filters, where the low pass smooths things out and makes them a bit fuzzy, perhaps. Um, yeah, removing small objects, getting rid of uh, speckle and noise. High pass filtering is where we sharpen uh, uh, transitions and edges. Um, and if we increase the, the, the kernel size, then we're going to increase the, the, the range that we're going to be looking at uh, for the, to, to influence our, our, our um, analysis. So let's look at the uh, um, sharpening, the uh, high pass filter. Here's our original data. And we run, in this case, the Laplace filter over it, and we get this sharpened image. We have another uh, photograph down here, an oblique photograph. And we can do sharpening on that as well. It works in exactly the same way. But in this uh, orthorectified image up here, we can see that we've, we've, we've highlighted some of the transitions where we go from one type of thing to another. Uh, and also we're picking up some artifacts in here that really aren't evident in the original image. That's interesting. It may not seem terribly interesting right now, but it is actually interesting as something to be aware of uh, and to consider that you might end up with artifacts in the data. Where do they come from? That's not always easy to know. These artifacts become even more evident uh, in this uh, edge detection, the, the Sobel edge detection, which we have looked at previously uh, on, a, on, a, on a previous course. And we can we can see we've got the, the Sobel Y and the Sobel X uh, here, and uh, we're getting lot more noise in this image. There's something going on. And this is a typical uh, phenomenon that you, you, you get when you start, when you go from the original data and start doing things with it, um, doing, doing forms of analysis, derivative products of the original data. You enhance certain uh, trends, certain uh, features within the image that may not be terribly evident in the original data. They may not be evident at all in the original data, uh, but come out through the analysis. Um, and this uh, will, would need explaining. If you, you were doing this analysis, you would have to find out what has actually gone on here and why the analysis has brought up this noise. Uh, there could be several explanations for this. Could be something to do with the orthorectification where the, the data has been transformed, it's been resampled. Uh, and so we could be getting some effect from that in this case. Um, something, uh, uh, moving on to some to a, a low pass filter, uh, smoothing, basically averaging here, uh, take the mean of all the pixels within uh, our, uh, our kernel. And so we go from this original image uh, and it gets blurred like this. That's what uh, our smoothing does. Uh, we're taking an average value, and so when we get to boundaries, they become a bit fuzzy. 
because we're then creating the average of either side of that boundary. Um, but why would we want to do this? Well, we could be looking for regional trends. So when we do our analysis here, we analyze all of these um, cells or pixels here and calculate the new value for this one here. Here's our kernel, here's the new value. And as you can see, I've written in uh, uh, NANs all the way around here, just to represent uh, no data, NAN fitted in more easily than no data, uh, because we can't really calculate uh, a value up here. There's no data to count. If we move this kernel, this window up to this cell here, they will be empty here. And this applies all the way around. So only once we get one step in with this three by three filter, uh, do we actually manage to calculate the true mean value for it. And um, this is supposedly indicative of some kind of trend existing within the, the data as a whole within that area. And if we increase the size of the, the filter of the window, we can look for larger and larger uh, trends. Um, similarly, we can use this, the, the same concept uh, to create, uh, um, uh, the, to look for the, for the mode, um, which is the, what is the most common value within a particular uh, area. And this gives us but perhaps you recognize this if you've been playing with any filters on, on, on an image program, Photoshop or, or anything else, GIMP, something like that. It kind of looks like um, a painting, uh, a very amateurish painting like that. We've filtered out uh, a lot of the fine detail, the noise as well, individual pixels that uh, perhaps stick out. And we just get this rather more even, smoothed out, uh, um, Kind of image. Well, that could be useful as well if we want to get rid of uh, um, um, noise that we don't think is there. And just, you know, as in all cases, just to illustrate, and hopefully you've seen this before as well, if we use a larger kernel, which is perfectly applicable, where we can absolutely do that, then this edge effect also increases. So we need, we need to really consider how big a kernel we're going to be using when we're doing our analysis to make sure that we don't end up with uh, edge effect in an area that we are interested in. Make sure that we get enough data so that if there's something that's happening at the edges that we don't like, we don't need to worry about it, we don't care, we're not interested in that area.